if you apply Maxwell's equations, to an EM plane wave, you discover some properties of the EM plane wave. I said if because we're not going to do it, right, again. We're not doing all the detailed field theory. To do it properly, you have to use differential form. So for instance, Gauss's law, the differential form is that uh, the divergence of the E field is zero. So if you want to try it, just take the expression for the plane wave, or the E field of the plane wave, take its divergence, set it equal to zero, and see if you find it requires certain vectors are parallel and certain magnitudes are equal. But if you do this, you can learn a lot of things. So I'm really just going to tell you the properties of a plane wave that you learn. One thing you learn is that the E field is always perpendicular to the B field, which is always perpendicular to the wave vector. And going up back around, the wave vector is perpendicular to the E field. So the three of them are all perpendicular to each other, and it works out in a way such that E cross B is in the direction of K. All right, so right-hand rule, E cross B uh, goes along K. So the wave propagates along with its E and its B perpendicular in the perpendicular direction. Um, another thing you learn is that E and B oscillate in phase. So I'll show you a picture in a minute, but if this one starts out as a cosine like that, then B also would start out as a cosine like that. So they're in phase. And finally, the amplitudes look like this. Um, that the E field's amplitude is C, the speed of light, times the B field's amplitude. The units work out volts per meters and Tesla, et cetera. And it doesn't really mean it's bigger, it just means that the, that's how the units work out, is that the electric field is the speed of light times B. So one reason this is interesting that all these properties exist is that really you don't have to know everything about a plane wave to know everything. Okay. If you just know that the electric field is here and is oscillating at a certain uh, frequency, has a certain amplitude, and is in a certain direction, then you know a lot of other things. If you know the direction of E and the direction of K, then you know the direction of B. And if you know the, uh, magnitude, or the, the magnitude of the E field, the amplitude, then you know the amplitude of the B field. Okay. So, so they are very interrelated. You don't just have arbitrary E fields and B fields flying around. Um, so if we know all those things, we can uh, make a pretty plot then of the image you should start cementing in your mind of what the plane wave looks like. And here it is, the E field oscillating here is a sign, and the B field also is a sign, but at 90 degrees, and they're both perpendicular to the K vector. So here the K vector is along Z, the propagation is along Z, and E and B are in the XY plane, as they should be. Because if you think about the phase front, or what makes us a plane wave is that where either the E field and the B field constant, they're constant in planes parallel to the XY plane. Right? So if you moved out in XY and made a plane, E would be the same everywhere, B would be the same everywhere. Move again, they would both be the same everywhere, etc. like we showed on the previous graph. So, but this is a common way to, to visualize the electromagnetic plane wave. 